I live in North Brookfield. I am half of the Mill Boys. Um, Dick is um, over chatting with people. He is from West Brookfield. Uh, we've been playing music now for about five or six years together, on and off, uh, enjoying it a lot, doing Irish music, doing country music, doing blues, doing all kinds of places. We end up playing in, well, the Oxford Senior Center here today. Um, we play various Irish places around. We play uh, at McLaddens in the uh, is that? That's in Hamden, Mass. Uh, we're going to be there actually uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday, af Saturday afternoon at 3:30, um, and we'll be there for a couple of hours. But it is St. Patrick's Day and Saturday, so as, as being an Irish duo, we are busy doing Irish things. So, and like I said before, I am about as close as I get to Irish as, as Dick, and he's walking over right now. So, um, without further ado, here is Dick. <laughs> Oh, sure. Go ahead. Oh, well, uh, my name is Dick Chase. I'm originally, I'm a mill boy. I'm originally from Lowell, Massachusetts. And, um, the first neighborhood I lived in, Lowell, was uh, everyone in the whole street was Irish. The Matthews, the Evanses, the O'Connors, the Regans, the Reagans, the Cutlers, they were all Irish. And so I got to hear a lot of music early on from 78s and people singing and playing. And though my aunt worked in the uh, in the uh, biggest mill in, uh, in town, and her husband, who was English, was a weaver. So I have a lot of connections to the mills and to Irish music. But then when I was uh, 12, we moved to a different part of Lowell. It's like a multinational city. It's very interesting. When I was 12, we moved to a different part of town. And it was the old Jewish district. It was all traditional. A lot of people who knew Yiddish and spoke uh, spoke it, and a lot of people with yarmulkes and whatnot. But there were other nationalities in town. I could walk, I could walk a block away to uh, a variety store, and uh, next door would be a Greek coffee house where they're playing. Um, Day music, mandolins and stuff like that, and so I got a multinational background, lots of New York, so we're happy to be here in uh, Oxford, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much. I've been over uh, to Ireland five times. Uh, Ireland five times? Ireland, yeah. I've played music over there. And, uh, one year they, they hired me to paint a mural in County Clare, so I got no salary, but I got uh, free places to stay, food, and 
last? No, I didn't. I don't think that. A lot of whiskey. You're a troublemaker. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so they, they put me up for the whole summer, which is perfect, you know. It was a mural of 1,500 square feet of all the musicians in town. It was great. Here's one that's a pretty song. The title is in Gaelic. It's called Erin Gra McCree. It means Ireland of my heart. And it comes from, a, it's about a guy who's left Ireland and left his mother and family, and he's in New York City, that's the voice of the song. At the setting of the sun, when my long day's work was done, I went out along the seaside for a walk, and I being all alone, I sat down beside a stone. For to gaze upon the scenes of old New York. Erin Gramacree, you're the dearest man to me. You're the fairest that my eyes have ever seen. And if ever I go home, tis from you I never wrong. From my own native land, far away. With the turf fire burning bright on a cold dark night, with the snowflakes falling gently to the ground. When St. Patrick's Day has come, we will wear the shamrock green in my own native land far away. Wanna try the chorus? Erin Grama Green, you're the dearest flag to me. The fairest that my eyes have ever seen. And if ever I go home, it's from you I never will roam. From my own native land far away. from you I never will grow from my own native land far away from my own native land far away oh, well that's, thank you so much it's not quite as rowdy but it has a nice sentiment to it. it's, it's a love song so that's nice all right. I only have 200 of these. I don't know why. Oh, here's a nice one. You'll like this one. All the Irish ones are green, except for that one. That one's on white paper. Yeah, see? Your turn. saw her tracks on the way Well he said to a guy who was standing there The giant Finn McCool must be walking out here He lies as he gets his footsteps He lies as he Well if you know we're saying to take the cake It's your eyes as he feet Yes there was a little girl She lived down the street Her name was Eliza and she had for a size and a cap, you couldn't get a match. They were size 28, 
One thing different about St. Patrick's Day in Ireland is that in Ireland it's more of a religious holiday. It's not just drinking and raising hell, it's, it's a religious holiday and people are very reverent and concerned about it. Nice. Uh, we'll see. What do, uh, do, you, do you know what they say is the most the most Irish city of all in, in, the, in the country? No, surprised me it wasn't. It's uh, Cork. Cork. They say if you want uh, the Irish atmosphere, the whole town of Cork is just beautiful. And I, it's funny, that, I mean, that's Irish people talking about this. That's the one they consider the most Irish, you know. I was in there for a few days one time, and it, it was beautiful because uh, on Sunday, people would, uh, the neighborhoods are lovely, uh, uh, attached brick houses, very well maintained. The, uh, and there's buses with, uh, the first floor of the bus is enclosed, but the top floor, you sit on the top and there's no roof. It's like a convertible bus. It's really cool, you know, to ride around and sightsee in one of those, you know, you're bouncing around. But I saw those, I said, oh, I want to go on the, those. Oh, I just want to go, but I didn't know how, what to do. I didn't see any bus stops, you know. So I asked the man who was standing near, and he said, oh, well, you just raise your hand, and they'll stop for you. That's kind of nice. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So the bus comes by, I raised my hand, and I went for a lovely ride. It's, I was right up on top in the front. It's a beautiful experience, you know. That's the County Cork. But what I started to say was, in Cork, people take their picnic baskets and their refreshments, and they dress up really pretty on Sunday. Dress up kind of nice, not overly formal, but they're not. It's not like bathing suits and t-shirts. They dress up really nice, and they go to this beautiful park and have a picnic. Uh, which would be uh, a, a little bit formal looking compared to here, you know. But it's very pretty, it's a very nice uh, uh, tradition, you know, to do that. It reminds me, you know, the uh, painting by Sue Rott, the, uh, the island of Le Grand Jatte. It's a picnic and it reminds me of uh, Cork. Am I talking too much? <laughs> Sick, shut up and sing. Okay. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. Okay. Yes, yeah, so right. okay. It's only going to walk along the bridge. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, then we're out of here. <laughs> okay. Here's one from the Clancy Brothers. This is a rowdy uh, singing song. I'll go to 
province but it's a whole region of the northwest of Ireland and uh, it's a whole large region that includes about uh, 10 provinces it's largely Gaelic speakers that live there uh, and uh, I got confused one time you know you go into a pub and have a couple of uh, you know a bottles of Guinness and have a nice conversation and stuff then you get out on the in your car and you have to drive on the left. You have to pay attention very closely even when you're not drinking two beers. So you're on the left. Then we come to a roundabout, okay? And I'm looking where to go and signs and stuff. I'm a little off. I'm looking, I look up at the signs, they're all in Gaelic. <laughs> so you have the Guinness, the left side, and the Gaelic signs. <laughs> It took me a while to shape up and get out of there. What the Connemara was that raw squid stuff you eat? No, wait a minute. That's, that's calamari. I'm sorry. I got it mixed up. Calamari. But that's a Gaelic, that's a Gaelic, uh, a Gaelic speaking area. A lot of farms and, uh, you know, the, the old fashioned farms are very much like, uh, 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 like 19th century farms were here because, uh, in Ireland, the old I don't, the old farms are the kitchen is kind of connected. If you want to milk the cows, you just go out the back door to the kitchen, and you're in the barn. So I was thumbing one day in Connemara. I was out thumbing with a backpack, and uh, and I saw one of these old-fashioned farms that looked real cute. So I, there's no cars going by for miles. I'd walked a long time, and uh, so I said maybe I'll stop in here. So I went into the farmhouse and I said, Oh, hello! Hello! And I hear out the barn, Oh, hello! Hello! Oh, there's someone here, he's out the barn. But he says, Come on in, it's okay. You can come in. I'll be right with you in a second. I'm just going to finish the milking here and I'll be right in. And I said, Oh, that's nice. You know, so I sit down. It's a cute little kitchen with a turf. You know what turf is? They burn uh, dried clumps of, of dirt and hay for fuel. Heavy pack, like bricks of it. So there's a turf fire in there. And I said, oh, that's nice. He says, oh, I'm making a stew, a lamb stew on the stove. Help yourself. I, I, I'm held up a little bit, but help yourself to the stew, you know. <clears throat> so I got a bowl that was sitting there. Got a little stew for myself. And then just as he was coming in, a pig, Rosie the pig, came in from the barn. She's... <laughs> She's running around the kitchen like crazy. She's mad and she's angry or something. I don't know what the hell's wrong with her. And I said, "What's the?" And he grabbed her and took her back out to the barn. She was going crazy in the kitchen, you know. I said, "What's the matter with Rosie?" 
he says, well, I, I hate to say it, but uh, you're using her dish. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> I should be more careful. <laughs> one you know. You know this one. It's called the Jug of Punch. You know what I'm saying? Or we'll do try C. As I was sitting with the jug and spoon, one fine pine morning in the month of June, small bird sat on an ivy punch, and the song he sang. Diversion could a man desire than to sit him down by an alehouse fire. Upon his knees, got a pretty wench, and on the table, a jug of punch. Toora loora loo, toora loora lay, toora loora loo, toora loora lay. Upon his knees, there's a pretty Doctors now with all their art They can't cure all their ails and troubles hard Even the cripple forgets his hunch When he's safe inside the jug of punch Toora loora loo, toora loora lay Toora loora loo, toora loora lay a small bird sat on an ivy punch, and the song he sang was the jug of punch. Oh, when I'm dead, then I'm in my grave. No costly tombstone will I crave. Just lay me down in my netted feet with the jug of punch at the head of me. He's got a bunch of songs. I'm not sure which one he's going to do next, but uh, Stockbroker just called him. So it's uh, hello. Yep. So he's uh, probably at least three or four cents on this transaction that's happening now. So up, oh, he's done. All right, I'm done. Uh, just hearing about uh, uh, the Founders Fair here in Oxford that you used to have, and uh, beautiful. A lot of nice fairs in the summer. Brookfield is a nice fair, expensive fair, and so on. So, here's a song about a, a couple of uh, people that are meeting, meeting at the fair. It's called the Founders Fair. Well, the night was clear, the stars were shining, the moon came. Quiet in the sky, the people gathered round, the bands were tuning, I could hear them now, they're coming through the ride, dressed in blue, you look so lovely. Danced all night. 
was from the north, up in Antrim, the north of Ireland. It's funny, the Republic of Ireland, if you look at a map, there's the Republic of Ireland, the green part, and then there's Northern Ireland. But the Republic of Ireland scoots up around the coast and the map, on the map, and it goes over the top of the whole island, you know? So if you're in the north of Ireland and you travel north, you're going to enter the Republic again, because it's... It surrounds Northern Ireland and Lower Ireland. I once heard this term, what the people in the South call the uh, call the Northern Irish. They call them Nordies. Nordies. It's not a mean term. It's just a Northern thing. You know? Uh, did you know where the red hair came from? The red hair. Uh, in Ireland, it's not a hair, but it's not a hair dye either. No, it's not. Actually, it's not a native uh, uh, phenomenon. It's uh, from the Vikings. That's the source of the red hair in Ireland. But you know, we got to remember when you're over there too, or when you're thinking about it. Uh, even now, in modern times, uh, countries over there are very close to one another. It's like it's you know to go to uh, Italy would be the equivalent of going to Rhode Island or something, I and mean, it's no big deal, you know. It could, I, in, I was looking in Dublin, you could get a flight to Athens for 40 bucks. <laughs> Takes an hour, it's no, no big deal, you know. So different countries are much closer, and it's, it's more the size of a state in this country, you know, than a, you know, they can't comprehend the size of America. Like I met this woman uh, one time, she said, Oh, you're from the States? No. I said, oh, yes, I am. Hi, what's your name? Anne. Oh, that's nice. He said, I was just wondering if you're from the States, maybe you met my Aunt Margaret. Oh. And I said, oh, yeah, where does she live? Well, she's in Milwaukee. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they don't have any concept. The, the, the whole country is about the size of New Jersey. <laughs> Oh, here's a song uh, that's, um, it's really a Boston song, but uh, people, it's an uh, Irish, it's an Irish song. 
you think of an Irish song with a Boston theme? That's a good, it's good thinking. <laughs> No, 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 but, no, but your answers are better than the uh, part. It's the MTA song about oh, Charlie. Yeah, 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 let's sing that one. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Let me tell you all a story. Let me retune my. Let me tell you all a story about a man named Charlie on the tragic and fateful day. He put a dime in his pocket and kissed his wife and family Watch a ride on the MTA You ready? Will he ever return? No, he'll ever return And his faith is still unlearned He may ride forever beneath the streets of Boston He's a man who never returns Well, Charlie handed in his dime there at the Kendall Square station. And he changed for to make a plane. When he got there, the conductor said he need another nickel. He couldn't get off of that train. Did he ever return? No, no, he never returned. And his fit is still. Charlie rides through the tunnel, saying, what will become of me? How can I afford to see my sister in Chelsea or my cousin in Roxbury? Well, Charlie's wife goes down there to the Scully Square station every day about quarter past two. Open window, she gives Charlie a sandwich as the train goes tumbling through chorus. Come on, will he ever return? Will he ever return? And his head is still unburned. He may ride forever in the streets of Boston. He's a man who returned. Now, citizens of Boston, don't you? Think it's an awful scandal how the people that have to pay and pay and pay fight that fair increase in the Walter O'Brien and get Charlie on the I might have mentioned this last year, but I, it was a, a crazy day for me. I'm, I was up in that part of uh, uh, the Republic of Ireland, the green part, uh, that goes over the top of Northern Ireland. It's called Donegal. It's a beautiful country. It's just beyond belief how nice it is. It's on the ocean, but there's beautiful farms and hills. It's just incredible, you know? But nothing in Ireland is uh, open in early in the morning, like here, you can't get breakfast anywhere. Uh, there's nothing open until uh, at, until 11 or 12. 11, the pub's open, so everything's open. But we're in one town, just to, briefly, I don't want to tell you. We're in one town and looking for breakfast. The only thing open was a pub, is uh, Eileen O'Mara's pub. So there's Eileen, we come in. And a lot of times the pubs are, the smaller ones are attached to a house too, like this. They live in the house and the pub is in front. But uh, my wife and I went in uh, and, oh, hi, and we met the lady and she was nice and everything. And, uh, and uh, we said, uh, 
well, we'll have a, a little drink of beer, that's great, to get us a beer. And then I said, do you know any place where we could get a, a, a nice breakfast? Because there's nothing open in the whole town. And she says, oh, what would you like? Oh, I said, oh, you know, some eggs. And so she, she uh, made us a beautiful breakfast, and uh, it was uh, slices of uh, black sausage. Did you ever have those? Black sausage and fried eggs, slices of, uh, of uh, orange with it, and we had a nice visit. The breakfast was awesome. So when I get up to leave, I said, uh, oh, oh, yes, I wanted to, what do I owe you for the breakfast? She says, oh, I'm not a restaurant. <laughs> she just went in the kitchen and made us, <laughs> made us a giant breakfast. <laughs> but that's typical of the, the good experiences that you have. Give me that address, because I don't cook breakfast. Yeah, it's a heck of a drive, I'll tell you. <laughs> Another funny thing that happened, uh, you hear, they have a different, uh, you, they have a different perspective on things. They don't have the same brain uh, procedures that we do, so you're apt to get strange answers at times. <clears throat> There's some restaurants, they're trying to look like uh, uh, McDonald's or American restaurants, you know, trying to be modern. So uh, I went to this one, it looked just like McDonald's, and it says, uh, Dennis O'Keefe's uh, Chicken Shack. So well, that's great, we'll have to try it, you know. We go into uh, the place, you know, and uh, there's a, a bunch of people in there, and, and I said, oh, can I speak to Dennis? Oh, that's me, yes, how are you? So lovely to meet you, and everything was very nice. And, uh, and I said, uh, well, I was just wondering, uh, how, do you, how do you prepare your chickens? And he says, well, we don't do that much for them, but we do tell them they're going to die. <laughs> A little that. different take on the whole thing, you know? <laughs> Which is good. That's good. That's good. Okay. Called, uh, it's an Irish song, but it's called. Uh, I thought it's a good match for uh, uh, Worcester. I thought it would be a good song for Worcester because it's called the uh, Home of the Bewildered. Well, a couple of limpid drinkers were the only ones in sight, rattling along like dancers in the polka dot and night. Jesus was at home, but he left a note upon the door saying, I will soon return. But they didn't feel like waiting, so they walked on in the dark. They said, We'll catch him here on Sunday after work. Now it's a home for the bewildered. It's a home for the bewildered. They drink one to remember, and they drink one to forget. One for the dead and one for the head, when the new boy may got wet. When the one had lost his temper, and the other one lost his teeth. And they had no place to go except the street. Now it's home. Are they going to serve uh, lunch pretty soon? Or? Yeah.
Well, well, we'll take a break and then we're going to walk around and play and uh, meet you in person. We've got five different instruments we want to try out, so we'll do that. How's some, that sound? Okay. Some of them he's never played before, so this is That's right. Good. <laughs> hey, thank you for listening. You did a great job, too. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's called Pig Town. It's a dance. It's called Pig Town.